So last week, uh, Cody Jinx released yet another fucking album because he's awesome and he should release one this Friday too because that'd be cool. Um, that'd be hilarious. Just like you thought it was only two. Exactly. That'd be the, that'd be dope. But I uh, know. So he released the wanting this week, which has the cool album cover of the white and the black wolf, which he mentions in one of his songs. Mm-hmm. And it's great. So first up yes. is the track. I really like it. Yes. I don't know if you had anything else to add to that. But first... <laughs> no, I mean, we're going to go through it, so I figured, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, so first up is the track written by him and Tennessee Jet, The Wanting. The Wanting. Yeah, so this, uh, you know, this album was, like we've just said, you know, released a week after a previous album. So it's kind of like, you know... A little bit of a surprise release, a little bit of a double album kind of thing. Um, but I just think it's really cool because it's it, it, both albums are, you know, the, the previous album's only nine songs plus an instrumental, so ten total songs. This one's 12. So it's like you're not getting um, the, at least, you know, we'll, we'll talk about each song obviously starting with this one, but uh, it's not a case, in my mind at least, where it's one of those where someone releases a double album, but you literally only get like an album's worth of songs that you care to listen to. Yeah. I really like both of these as just as albums, and they, they kind of have a different feel to them. It, it, they're both very introspective, but sonically, I feel like they do fit together as separate, you know, separate albums. Um, and so then starting with The Wanting, um, it's just another entry into the repertoire of just a really, like a really well written um, song that has, has sadness to it and, and just is really cool. I love the idea of like, you know, he, he talks about how he, he's, you know, trying to get over this this person but all like he still just wants them and so like he says like you know like the stinging or the burning of a slowly turning knife like that just is like some grade a fucking songwriting yeah um and then just the the whole idea that he's just like i may never live this feeling down you know he's just not sure what the future is going to be and then you just like i can't want you anymore just like the only way i'm going to get over this is just to fucking stop but i don't know how and i just i dig it yeah. I really do. See, the thing with these two albums, I think this one is more of like the country album where it's just songs about kind of stories and feelings and all that. But the first one to me felt like that one was written for his family. Like that one was like his own personal journal, whereas this one is more yeah. of like a song released for everyone. Yes, but I, 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 and we'll get to some of the other songs that are on this album that I feel like kind of mix with, you know, they would have made sense on After the Fire, yeah. especially in the vein that you've just described. But I do agree that it does, uh, you know, I almost even say that there's a lot more songs on this one that are kind of more, um, you know, not, certainly not, you know, modern day mainstream fucking commercially sounding country. But he's got some songs on here that kind of sound more, um, approachable for a non-hardcore country fan. Like he yeah. got, he's got a little bit more going on, a little more upbeat sound to that. Well, even this, uh, this one, the wanting, where it has that like whoa, whoa exactly. Whoa. Yeah, that, yeah. I think that's the Tennessee Jet uh, feeling in there, though. But yeah, sure, it's sure, sure, sure. Yep. Moving on to number two is the same kind of crazy as me. I think this is one that you're kind of talking about with the, uh, the kind of the approachability because it's definitely one of those like rednecks like me type like are all the yes. people out there who are just like me kind of thing and yep i i really i really love this song um because honestly the 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 second chunk um has some of my favorite lines where he says you know there's more colors in red and blue to paint the elephant in the room you know <laughs> obviously talking about the modern state of just division everywhere in in politics and fucking everything yeah um and then he's just like you know we piss and moan about that and this always another ass to kiss but i believe that freedom rings i believe the songs we sing it's just like i i really I, like you said it's kind of you know a bit of that anthem to the to the country crowd but at the same time he's kind of saying he's like you know i'm just doing my own thing this is how i feel and in the end i believe that you know when i die you know if i'm right god and you know is, is just just the same kind of crazy that i am and, and there's people out there that are the same kind of crazy as i am and i really dig it exactly um moving on to numero trace 
is never alone, always own lonely. <laughs> I almost fucked up. I did fuck it up. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, this one's written by him and his wife. Last one was Ward Davis and Greg Jones, but yeah. Um, this one I've, I do love. It's that whole, it's like yes. that alone in a crowded room type feeling song, but yeah, I just, yeah, I, I absolutely. And this is one that, that kind of feels like it would have, it could have fit on after the fire because it's all about this, you know, being on the road, feeling lonely, not actually being lonely, but feeling it, yeah. you know, not, or not being, not actually being, but not actually being alone, but feeling very alone. Yeah. Um, I, I really like it as an introspective kind of thought process and is just super great. And I love that he wrote it with his wife. It's even kind of neat. Yeah, even better than the – I love, the, obviously, the line, never alone, always lonely. Is I love the lyric even better, easy to find, seldom seen. I think that's such a cool mm-hmm. line. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. Like how you're there yes. but you're not – people aren't seeing you there actually. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I love that lyric. It's, yeah, it's I, I I really really like this song. I really really do. Yeah. Not that I don't like really anything he's yeah. ever released. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a song but, by him I don't like. So yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Um, but next up is four. Uh, this is a song about my ex girlfriend from college, whiskey. Dick. What? <laughs> whiskey dick. <laughs> yes. Um. This one was actually not written by him. It was Casper Rick Wade and Jamie Richards. Jamie Richards, he has that awesome song, um, I'll I'll have another. Yes. If, like if, yes. if I can't hear of her, I'll have another or whatever that lyric, that song is. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Um I, I do dig this song. I think it's fine. I I feel like I kinda would have this be like the weakest on the album. Yeah, honestly, until um, I clicked on I forgot about it. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh you know, because it, it's it's one of those songs that seems a, it's a bit stereotypical when it comes to the country realm of just song about whiskey. And then, you know, like, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the chorus is saying, come tomorrow, I'll probably buy some more black label Evan Williams from the liquor store back to the bar till my drinking's done. Whiskey, won't you help me make it through this one? You know, the, the classic heartbeat, turn to whiskey, drink yourself, you know, drink yeah. the pain away kind of thing. Um, it's fine because Cody Jinks is obviously an incredible singer. Yeah. Um, but it is it is one of them that I'm kind of like. There's there's a lot of other really powerful songs on this album and on After the Fire that I'm kind of like, yeah, no, this one's kind of a skipper, but still, you know, still perfectly fine as a song. Yeah, it's still a great song. It's just, yeah, it definitely is, it steps into the cliche a little bit. Yes. But yeah. Especially mixed among all these really introspective songs yeah like this next one where even yeah. angels fear to fly this is such a cool like like again we keep you know mentioning like i really like this line i really like this line but i really <laughs> really like so many of these lines you know the the bit of the the chorus where he says you know i've he's basically talking about how he's made mistakes and and you know has regrets and all that good stuff but the way that he has it where he says but i've never been afraid to spread broken wings in skies where even angels fear to fly like that's just a really cool Mm -hmm. it's a really cool way to say (laughs) you know and put a twist on the idea of like the the off the beaten path or, or straight and narrow and all that shit like it's just a really interesting way um and you know and he's he's acknowledging you know, he's acknowledging regrets. He's acknowledging kind of a different, you know, path that he's followed, but also in a sense of like, he hasn't been afraid to do things differently. Some, some of it doesn't necessarily have such a negative connotation with it. I think it's just really, really cool. Yeah. Oh yes. Um, fucking a right. <laughs> moving on. Uh, the next song track number six is written by Jada dryer, 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 and uh, Josh Morningstar, who is, awesome uh which one yeah, i is. feed yeah this one's dope sauce i you know this is basically the uh you know the 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 cover the cover uh, yeah. animal you know um and so just the the idea of you know there's a there's a black and a white wolf in me and i live and i die by which one i feed and so he's just constantly throughout this whole song showing these opposites that he has both going on and so basically saying like you i mean the whole thing kind of comes down to there's a there's a a light path a a goodness path and there's like a darkness slash evil slash self-destructive path and just basically like i've got all of this within me and so it just kind of matters which one you know which one i feed and like the feed through you know actions and and thoughts and all that good stuff and so it's just a super cool concept 
and especially with the with the badass album cover it's just like yeah this is awesome big fan. yeah well also it's also you can tell it's definitely uh autobiographical about josh morningstar because recently on his instagram mm-hmm. he posted how he was like nine years sober from heroin yes. or whatever it was yes yeah so like you can tell that that's a thing of like he's been fighting these demons his whole life and it's like which path am i going to go down so it's definitely a josh morningstar song and it's yeah, it's perfect. In yes, that way. absolutely. The, and the uh, especially like like you just brought up is a perfect thing to think about. Like you know all the the imagery about like fighting and war inside. Like mm-hmm. that's exactly what I'd imagine a guy who struggled with addiction like that would yeah. have and you know, would have gone through. And yeah, and I love it because Josh Morningstar is such an amazing songwriter. But obviously, no offense to him, Cody Jinks has the better voice, and having his voice get put mm-hmm. to this song, it's it makes it that much. It's better. a great, it's a great match made in heaven kind of situation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I do love Josh Morningstar songs, and you should listen to them. But oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but next up is number seven, songs by Cody Jinks and his wife Rebecca. Uh, a bit, a bite of something sweet. Yeah, this is uh, I, I really, I really dig the uh, that that choice of uh, of uh, I don't know if it's technically if it's if you call it metaphor is it or just narrative device or whatever the whatever the fuck. But the you know talking about how his soul is craving something and he wants he wants this bite of something sweet this this something you know old and good and and from you know from the past you know the idea he's saying like i need to lie down and rest for a while i need a sunny day but clouds are more my style my soul hungers for something more than i can eat give me a new day and a bite of something sweet i just really it's almost like it seems almost like poetic like you would just be written out rather than sung and i just it's I, i like it a lot oh yeah yeah i don't have too much to add to this i just think it's it's one of those that's very like, if you were just to read it as a poem, it would make just as yeah, much sense exactly. as a song. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, moving on to number eight, another Josh Morningstar song, The Plea. Yeah, and this is for sure where you can see, um, you know, in the mind of Josh Morningstar, a person who's battled with addiction, just kind of, you know... Oh, he, like he's almost like he's he's reached a he's reached a, a either like a breaking point or a crossroads or something. He's just kind of like this shit's gonna <laughs> this shit's gonna kill me, you know. This shit's you know hard, you know, and just kind of like you know it's called the plea, and it basically is him going from saying like like asking his mom for help essentially, saying you know ask apologizing to his woman, saying that he wishes he could be better to them, you know asking the Lord to protect him, asking Jesus to save him. Like it's a, it's a really, um, you know, I mean, it's, it's a plea. It's called the plea. It's a plea. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. I mean, obviously I've never been a touring artist, but even just the lyrics of like, just protect me from these demons that are pretty much in my own head. It's such a thing that even I've been through. I'm sure you've been through. Everyone's been through. And yeah, it's such a, yeah, I, I can't say it enough. How many times, uh, enough times, how great of a, uh, lyricist songwriter Josh Morningstar is, and uh, everyone should listen to his stuff. Seriously. Um, number nine is a song written by Cody Jinks, and again, that Mr. Morningstar is "It Don't Rain in California." It's just a statement. <laughs> it doesn't, and it's not fair, and that's why they don't deserve to have sports championships because it's nice out all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I was trying to think. There was another song that came out recently about it not raining in California. What was that? It was an artist that we listened to. Who the fuck sang it? I know. Um, shit. Why can't I think? Was of it that? a Was it a John Party song? Because he always talked about California. No. I, I, I can like hear it in my brain, but I, I don't know what it is. Um, but I do. Lo- I, I like this song because it's like him talking about how like the 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 lady person you know love interest whatever you know goes to california and he's just like it's not gonna take her long to figure out it's just like way nicer there but then it turns into even more just like the being away from him is is nicer and so then when he says that he goes to california and then it's raining and he's just like oh i brought the i brought the down with me um you know the thunder and lightning seem to follow me around um, and it's just you know it's it seems to me like it's a, a a coming to terms with a with a breakup or something something along those lines. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't have anything else to add to that one. 
Uh, ba ba Number ten is a song written by Clint Park, who is uh, the one who opened for Ward when we went and saw him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cody Jinks, Greg Jones, and Ward Davis is Wounded Mind. I think this might be my favorite from this album. Um, I just I, I love the and this is another one that I think could have could have fit on uh, after the fire because of the 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 idea of it where he's basically talking about you know yeah I, I've I've ascended to this level of, of fame and success where there's there's people that are always you know interested in, in talking to me and 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 this song kind of is is him you know grappling with the idea of him standing for something to mm-hmm. so many and and this it's you know and it's real like there's so many people like me who are like this guy stands for the entire idea of modern country music being what country music is and kind of like carrying this torch forward and like all the burdens that go with that so then to have him be like you know really all i want to do is just tell people that i'm not that special leave me the hell alone i don't want to try to be cool all the time i'm just a guy with a wounded mind it's such a it's such a cool song Especially knowing that he's saying this to so many people that basically hold him up as this thing, and, and he's put just him on a like, pedestal, yeah, exactly. And I think it's just a really, it's a really cool decision to to put it on an album, and it's a really cool song. Oh yeah. Um. Next up is number eleven, written by Chris Hennessy, like Tennessee, Tennessee, like Tennessee, <laughs> is a ramble. Uh, I'm pretty sure this was actually on Chris Hennessy's last album because I think it was actually oh, called Ramble. It I could be wrong, nice. but um, yeah, Chris Hennessy is absolutely fan fucking tastic. So yeah, uh, I dig I dig this song. It's kind of one of those where it, it's uh, it's a lot of lines uh, about this the idea of just kind of you know freedom and going out there, uh, just kind of setting your own path and whatever. And so it's just a uh, it's an interesting song. I do really like the 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 chorus where he's just saying like "ramble when the world gives you more than you can handle." So basically, just like, I mean, not just fucking run away from everything, but in the in the sense, just kind of fucking start moving and, and get away from things, and you can clear your clear your head kind of idea. Yeah, I looked it up. Yeah, it's, it was the title of his album, and it featured Alison Krauss on the song. Oh, and damn! So yeah, this is a cover of that, and yeah, it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's a great song and Chris Hennessy's great and you should listen to him and Hennessy like Tennessee. Um, Hennessy like Tennessee. <laughs> anyway, lastly, Hell but not yeah. leastly is track number 12 written by Cody Jinx and Mr. Tennessee Jet is the Raven and the Dove. So this is pretty neat because I just noticed the little blurb that they have down there that Tennessee Jet saying he's saying that he says you know proudest co-write I've ever been a part of stem from the fact that Cody has a tattoo of a raven on one hand and a dove on the other I got to asking him what what those represent and the song wrote itself pretty quickly <laughs> <laughs> it's just a cool and so like obviously the 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 raven you know symbolizes all sorts of you know death and darkness and all that shit and the dove is the you know the pure white life afterlife heaven all that all that good shit so it's it's a little bit of the the same kind of feeling of the which one i feed where it's you know the the good and the bad you know juxtaposed and all that all that good shit um kind of want to get a raven and a dove tattoo now (laughs) i mean it's pretty fucking dope i'm not gonna lie (laughs) really not on my hands but (laughs) i really like it but i mean like you you, the whole thing kind of does come together Like, like, like he's saying you know some days a raven some days a dove some days the dark cloud hanging around, others the light above. I'm scuffed by the devil, but I'm washed in the blood. So, like, it's it's the good, evil, God, devil, back and forth. This is all that good this shit. Is actually, Duality of man, you know. This is actually my favorite by far. I can say very confidently from this one. I also love this one because, obviously, not to for those uh, traditionalists out there who would hate me saying this, it reminds me of Eric Church's. Um, uh, is this their church? Living part of life. It's very porch picking type sound to me. Is what this sounds like. Mm. Sounds like. It's very. Mm. It's that very live one take sounding song that's just being picked or played on a like a 
porch or you know just kind of in a room together it doesn't sound too studio production it just sounds very simple to me and i really love it for that obviously on top of the amazing lyrics with it but yeah yeah i i mean it's incredible it really is but the yeah i mean yeah yeah nailed it well done yeah so this is (laughs) definitely my favorite from the track last track on the album Yes, it's amazing. Next week is going to be his third album of the month, so get ready for that. No. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not called The Wanting, it's not called The Needing, it's called The Could Be Fine If If Happened-ing. Exactly. 